idea about came about quite simply. There was a, an exhibition and a commemorative gig planned in Macclesfield. And what happened was, was that um, Steve Morris and myself were involved in it separately. Um, originally, it was to celebrate 30 years of Ian Curtis's life. Um, but the whole thing fell through. And I was very annoyed after all the work that we'd put in that it fell through. So because of the simple fact that we never celebrated anything to do with Joy Division when we were in New Order, since New Order split, um, I found that to be quite sad. So I thought, right, I'll do it. I'll celebrate 30 years of Ian Curtis's life by playing Joy Division's music. Um, because I own the factory, uh, I have somewhere to play, which was easy. I got my friends together and we formed the light. I must admit, the idea of playing the LP appeals to me much more than just playing the music, because somehow playing the music as if you're the band in a set doesn't really get me. But playing the LP as, a, as an art project, and the way that the LP was um, produced by Martin Hannett, the music is a lot different to the way that Joy Division used to play it live. So that most people have the record. A lot more people have the record than saw Joy Division. So the idea is, is that we emulated the good bits of the record and the good bits of Joy Division and put them together. Which I think we've, we've done very successfully, the band are absolutely fantastic. I couldn't be more proud of them. Uh, and the fact that I have my son playing bass in the band and he's the same age as I was when I wrote Unknown Pleasures and Closer is eerie. It really is. It's, it's a strange, really strange occurrence. They've become one of my favourite bands over the last 18 months. I guess it's a bit strange for me because I kind of grown grown up with it since I was like this big. Uh, but I, before we played the concerts, I was always more of a New Order fan. Because that was, I'd saw New Order play live loads of times, watching my dad play and all this, and they never played Joy Division songs. So I kind of, I knew it was there, but I didn't really embrace it until we started touring it. And then, uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a massive rocker, like that's my thing. So as soon as I really got into Unknown Pledges, that was like, okay, this is one of my favourite bands. Now. So definitely forever now, I'm always going to be well in there with with Joy Division, top band. The Lowry shows were very important to me because Salford is my hometown. Uh, I'd never considered to um, play the music there, which is odd because most of it was written in Salford. You know, Bernard and I are both from Salford. Um, Ian Curtis was from Stretford. Steve was from Macclesfield. So we have more of a Salford connection than anything else. And a lot of the music was written at a pub called The Swan in Salford and uh, at our rehearsal room um, which was in uh, Salford. <laughs> it was a special night I think it's always a bit strange playing when everyone sat down this time is a little bit different but it's always nice to play in the hometown because you can go all the way around the world but then it's always special to come home and play like five minutes away from where I live and it was good. This, did, did, I mean, this weekend's been really good because I've had friends come over from everywhere. It's like you can play for all your friends as opposed to playing for people you don't know. 
which in a way is a bit more nerve-wracking. I enjoyed the Lowry gig, so it's a weird one uh, playing to a seated audience to be playing a record which is so kind of bombastic, but in a weird way it works because it gave people an opportunity to just really absorb it. Uh, everyone was in seats, so um, you know everyone had to sit there quite respectfully. The other all sat there and would sit and would clap at the end of the uh, at the end of each song. So it was uh, a different different vibe of doing. It's a bit strange because the, 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 they never have a lot of bands playing there. It's not really set up for gigs, proper rock and roll gigs. But the venue amazing, and the sound the sound was amazing. I think because they don't have bands playing there. The the PA the PA system wouldn't you know it wouldn't project that much volume. So it was a good level. It was really comfortable. Um, it was still loud enough. It, it, it was really nice to play the two records together. That felt very strange. It's the first time we'd done it. I knew Unknown Pledges more than Closer. I, I'd say that I prefer playing Closer now. It's a lot more emotional and a lot more musical than Unknown Pledges. Whereas Unknown Pledges is just raw punk. It's the music I grew up with, so it's my, my heritage. And to get to play that stuff and bring that music back to an audience instead of it um, being, you know, locked away, you know, as it was really when Ian died. Unknown pleasures, a bit more, a bit more bare. Not as many keyboards in it from my angle, obviously. Both equally as good, just different albums. I really enjoy Closer um, because there are more keyboards in it. I prefer, you know, I, I, uh, I like that part about it. Obviously, Unknown Pleasures is um, a record which is a more of an upbeat record, maybe more of a naive record on the on the part of Joy Division themselves. Closer, you could hear you can hear the band has grown when they recorded Closer. It's a more complete album, and um, we were kind of daunted to play that record when we first started because it's got so many more textures and layers. It's actually a very beautiful record. I'd probably rather listen to Closer myself than listen to One of Pleasures from beginning to end. You know, I love the, um, the more downbeat stuff, the Eternal and Decades, tracks like that, I think are real masterpieces. very happy with them, very proud of them and it's such a compliment to all the members of Joy Division, Ian Curtis, Barney Sumner, Stephen Morris and I, that people still regard the music as highly as they do in 2011 as they did in 1978, that is amazing. But you know, I mean they're great songs, it was a great writing and a great performing partnership. I love him. You know, he's like one of my best friends. It's weird because everyone says it must, it must be weird playing with your dad. But when we're on tour, I don't really see him as my dad. He's just like one of my friends because we have such a great relationship. But since we started doing this, we've got a lot closer, pardon the pun. I'm really enjoying being with him because I was always, when New Order were touring, I was always there, but just watching and thinking, oh, I want to do that with him one day. And now we are, so it's a perfect situation really. His back catalogue is crazy. You know, 34, 35 years, with like five, six, seven bands. 
and each, each one of them you can name so many songs from. I mean, it's, it's remarkable the, the contribution he's made to music and the amount of people he's inspired. He, he, he is who he is, you know, he, he doesn't pretend to be anybody else, he doesn't have a public persona and a private personal persona, he is just, you know, the guy that was born in Salford 50 odd years ago. He's a legend, right, basically, very proud to be playing with him, so brilliant, unique style he's sort of, um, he's come up with, um, great style he's got there, and yeah, hats off to him. I've always admired what he's done. He's got the most um, individual, the most recognisable bass sound on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. The second you hear a Peter Hook bass line, you know it's him. So um, I've got nothing but respect for the guy, and now he's become a good, a good close friend. Jack, of course, is a, is a cranky old bastard way before his time. But he, he's doing remarkably well. Um, the way he, you know, he gets stuck into them bass lines and uh, he's, uh, he's, he's very, very capable of uh, doing what it, we get to do. So, you know, the guy's there on merit, not just because of who he knows, he's there because he's, he's the right bass player for the job, so. Amazing bass player. Um, but he's also focused as well, really focused, he's really, he won't let any shit get past him, <laughs> he's, you know, he's focused and he knows when something's not right and, and he, you know, he puts his foot down, makes sure it's done properly. He's got a very grown up head on his shoulders and, um, and as a musician he's grown, as a, you know, as a touring musician he's really kind of like found his feet and great to see such a progression in such a short space of time. And that's a fantastic guitarist. Definitely the best guitarist I've ever worked with in my entire life. I think some of the, sometimes on the concerts I look over at him across the stage and I'm just not even concentrating on what I'm doing because I'm like, what is he, how is he making those noises coming out of that one guitar? He brings so much to um, the music. Another amazing musician, he's, I mean, Nat's one of the the core members of this band. I mean, I think without Nat, this it wouldn't be the same at all. He's a fantastic uh, musician. Paul Keogh is renowned for his um, you know, unique style of drumming, unique style of life. Uh, great drummer. Very straight, his style, but very rocky. And the backbone of, the backbone musically of the, of the band really, being the drummer, um, keeps it solid and you can pretty much rely on him. Keo is living the dream. He, he, there's nothing he wants to do more than play the drums and party. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy for the boy. He is such a funny guy. We have such a laugh together. And then sometimes I think because uh, everyone in the band is a lot older than I am and so sometimes it's like I'm kind of the odd one out but it, I think in, deep inside Keo is just a big kid so we have a good, we, we get on really well together. Like I always know that if we want to go out Keo's going to be there ready, he's just going to bring the party and he's, 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 he's enjoyed himself, you know he's a top drummer, he's a great guy. Andy Poole is renowned for his odd footwear. Andy is one of the easiest guys to get on with I've ever met. And, uh, you know, I've known him for so long, ever since I was about seven or eight years old. And they were, he was in Monaco with my dad. And I'd watch them rehearse every day, so I've known these guys for, for years. He, he's not a pianist, he's a keyboard player, he's a synthesizer player. He, he knows his. He knows his synths very, very well. And he's the man with the weird sounds. He's, uh, he's a lovely bloke, a really, really nice guy. Um, he knows exactly what he's doing when it comes to the keyboards. It's all a complete mystery to me. I don't know what the hell he's doing, but he, uh, he kind of like, Andy's kind of like the glue in the band. He makes it all stick together. A 
life generally boils down to one thing and it's about being happy and about being comfortable in your skin and being happy with what you do and uh, I, I've realized that doing the light with the lads I feel very very happy and very very comfortable doing it and it really feels something to be proud of. It's a very strange position to be in, playing Joy Division's music after all that time. Is you, you, you had no idea how people were going to respond. And the, the interesting thing is, is, is that you are building up over the year and a half that we've been doing it, a following of people that come from places, um, you know, very far away. And it, and it is a great compliment. I'm French, but I live in Miami, so I flew all the way to witness uh, those concerts at the Lorry. Oh, I, I come from Shropshire, which is in the Midlands, near Birmingham. It was a one-off gig, so we just thought we'd definitely got to come and see this, so. We are, we are coming from uh, North France, Lille, next Lille. Uh, I drove up from London this morning just to see this gig. I vengo desde Barcelona, in España. I've actually traveled uh, over 100 miles this evening to get here. And, you know, in, in many ways, I'm actually sad but there's only two LPs because it will come um, to an end uh, quite naturally. Once you, we, the idea next year is, is that we will play Still, which will, is the last Joy Division record. So when we play Manchester on May the 18th, that, that will be the last time really um, that, that you'll play you know, Manchester with the Joy Division stuff. It's quite an odd feeling really. We, you know, we'll reevaluate it, and I will be very, very proud of the fact that we will, we will have played every single Joy Division song. Just to tick off on my list, you know, things to do before I die: play every Joy Division song. Done. Nice. The most inspiring thing about Manchester has to be the people. Um, they are the ones that helped, helped us get to where we are. <laughs> um, and Rob Gretton and Tony Wilson in particular were always adamant that we should give something back to Manchester. And you know, the Hacienda, I suppose, was our way of doing that. I didn't realise at the time that we had to give everything back. But you know, it would have been nice to keep a little. Um, but you know, I mean, no, you do. I mean, I've been all over the world many, many times and I'm always glad to come home. And when I tramp the streets of Manchester, I feel happy and I feel like I'm in the right place. And uh, I suppose it's an odd thing, really. I owe a lot to the place. I'm very proud of the place, even though I'm not born, even though I wasn't born here, I still have a pride, you know. Um, Manchester is one of the, probably the most important city in this country for music. That's why I came and that's why I stuck around for so long. This, this is definitely one of, one of the biggest biggest cities for, for music um, in Europe, if not the world. You know, you can find yourself standing in the middle of Manchester thinking, you know, it's pretty great, but you can tell why we, we produce what we do, I suppose, you know, it's, it, every, every place has its own, its own vibe, its own atmosphere. It's a world away from sunshine and beaches and stuff like that but maybe that's a core part of why uh, you know why some of these musicians are created and given the influence from all this all this surrounding and, and the weather and so yeah very proud to be from here very pr proud to be a musician from Manchester. I've always found Manchester to be very inspiring it's still very important musically now and I'm very proud of the fact you know that everywhere you go around the world there are not many cities like Manchester, you know, that are so rich in musical heritage uh, as we are. Touring is wonderful. It's fantastic when you're young because it's such an adventure. The, some of the places we've been, and I've met some amazing people all around the world. I've got contacts everywhere now, friends want to come over. and. It's amazing. I never thought I'd go to Brazil and Mexico and Australia and it's just a really is un unbelievable position to be in. To go to such 
um, far flung places as uh, as Australia, or New Zealand, or you know America, Mexico, uh, Canada, Brazil. It, it, it really is a global global phenomenon, and it's quite strange to think being from Manchester and growing with this music and knowing where it comes from and you know knowing understanding why it is what it is and why it sounds the way it does because of where it was created to then go to these thoroughly exotic places and find that the people there it matters as much to them as it does to us and find that the, pe the people there that for the last 30 odd years have loved that music as much as we do is it's quite amazing. Go to these places and play these venues uh, and amazing festivals with all these guys. Um, uh, yeah, amazing. Amazing touring. Love it. Absolutely love it. Long may it last. You know, the, the main thing that I find in my life is, is that I'm very proud of the music that I've written. And unfortunately, and whether anybody else agrees with me or not, I will play it anywhere uh, at any time. I remember uh, Barney once saying to me, yeah, you'd fucking play in Beirut, you. And I thought, yeah, I would. <laughs> I'd be delighted to play in Beirut. Because the, the fact that people enjoy and appreciate what you do, your art, uh, has got to be one of the finest, and most wonderful feelings in the world. And to change the world of music once with a group, as we did with Joy Division, it's fantastic. To change the world of music twice, as we did with New Order, and then the Hacienda, Acid House, Manchester, post-punk, new romanticism. You know, I've been very, very lucky, thanks to the Sex Pistols and the punk, I've been at the right place at the right time, many, many times, and that sometimes makes me look back in wonder and I don't know what I've done to be as lucky uh, as I am, I really don't, but I thank God for it, I really do uh, and I hope I'm doing it for a long, long time <laughs> as well, I know I'm happy.